Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of the Not To Talk About podcast. It has been a while, we apologise for that, three uni students coming up to this time of year, it's always busy, but we're back now thankfully and that's the best part about it. What we see as always, Tom, how are you brother? Yeah man, I'm really good, I'm, I'm glad to be back, like you say, um, that's the you know most important thing and uh, get through exams and, and, and whatnot and um, yeah, we're at the other side now and uh, glad to be back in in your your eyes and ears as they say i love that mate love that and yeah look as, as tom said there i mean i'm uni busiest time of the year especially when you're in your final year of it see tom the exams me and charlie with the dissertation as well it's not been easy but again we're happy to be back and that's the main thing obviously as well if you kept eyes on social media you understand that we did put out the uh the poll for our awards you know, and I guess this is where we're going to start with. Obviously, we'll move on to different subjects throughout, but it only feels right to start here. So, the first part of that poll, if you like, was to talk about uh, the player of the season. We gave you two options, and I think, obviously, everybody knew what options we were going to give. It was obviously between Jody Jones and Macaulay Langstaff. And to be honest, I expected it to be a lot closer than what it was, but it ended up as Jody Jones receiving 90% of the votes, with Macaulay Langstaff only receiving 10% of the votes. And Tom? I just like your thoughts on that because for me, I am I am very surprised. Yeah, I mean, he, he got my vote, um, but yeah, I think it, the 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 percentages make it look a lot, like, I guess, harsh on Maka because he Maka's had a brilliant season. Like, let's not get that wrong. Like, he's in the team of the season for a reason. He's top scorer. His first season in the EFL, he, he's top scorer in the league. Like, that's insane. So, just want to like tip my hat to him because he has a brilliant, brilliant campaign. But Jody Jones, I think it had to be him. He got, as I say, he got my vote. Um, you know, broke the assist record. I, I, I don't know if we're going to see an individual season quite as good as that for a long time. He was for a long time because he was just excellent all season long. Um, you know, assists. Obviously, got plenty of goals as well. Playing at left wing back as well, so it's not like he's played on the wing to get that assist record. Just absolutely. Ridiculous from him, and and also when you factor in where Jody's come from, you know he's he's come back from from injuries. Uh, everyone knows his story. We haven't got to go into that now, but I think that he, you know, uh, was was brilliant this season. And and ninety percent of the vote is harsh on Maka, but at the same time, it's like Jody deserves it. So uh, yeah, I think he's, he's had a great season. Absolutely agree, especially for the part that I heard. And guys, again, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. Obviously, a uni accommodation is a fire alarm. It's just decided to go off. And we did speak about this before and that it might go off. Fully enough, it goes off in the first two minutes. And it does have a tendency to do it again. So you might hear it. You might not. Hopefully not. But yeah, look, obviously, Jody's story is remarkable. There's no two ways about it. I feel like especially, you know, the 24 assists to break the record as well. But also, I feel like, you can talk about Jody's story a lot, and of course, don't, every time you talk about it, you, you know the more you talk about it, don't make it any less remarkable. Don't get me wrong, but at the end of the day, Macaulay Langstaff was his first season as the NFL football ever, and to to finish not only as top goal scorer in League Two, but top goal scorer in the whole EFL, you know, with twenty eight goals, I think it takes some doing. You know, he's played at the lowest. Well, I say the lowest; it's not obviously technically lowest, but he's played at very low levels of English football, and he's had a rise, and he deserves it. And I didn't want to ask you this question because I thought, you know what, we'll do it for another episode. But um, obviously as well, you, you know, you, you're naive to suggest that neither are going to get, you know, interest. Obviously not as of right now. But my question for you is, when do you think that first, you know, that first rumour, if you like, is coming? I think it'll be quick. I think it'll be, you know, next few weeks or so, to be honest, as, as teams start to ramp up their business. I mean, I know we're going to talk about a certain player later on who's who's made a move, and um, yeah, I think it'll be you know there'll, there'll be interest, there'll be rumours, definitely. Swans is going to get mentioned. Let's just get it out there straight away. You know, Swans is going to be mentioned because of Luke Williams. Um, but I've got, I've got like a good feeling that, that both you know I could end up we could, we could come on the next episode and both have gone, so I could be really silly. But I, I've got a good feeling about both, especially Mako. Obviously, gave that interview to yeah East Midland. I think it was uh, one of the news. I was either ITV or BBC, I can't remember. But he gave an interview saying that it takes take something astronomical for him to leave. And I know a lot of people say you know, he's at the stage of his career where he may want to get that move. You know, it's like he's approaching uh, an age where, you know, the move is kind of, it's the right time. But at the same time, he has signed a long-term contract. So 
you know, he's under no illusions. When you sign that contract, you know, you, you want to be at a club for a long time. And I think that um, he hit your top goal scorer. There's no reason why he can't do that again in this team. Uh, he continued to score even after the manager um, changed. So, he, you know, he's not like he's completely stopped scoring. He still scored goals. Um, and And I think that maybe it's optimistic, maybe it's blind optimism, but I, I do hope that they'll both be here next season. And I've got a feeling that we may surprise a few by, by keeping hold of them because we've been here before with players, um, you know, that have been rumoured to leave and, and they've ended up staying. So, um, yeah, we, we're not necessarily a, a, a selling club. We're a club that look to let players sort of go on, on freeze rather than actually sell. And I think that it would all depend on the kind of fees that we're talking about because, you know, if you're getting seven figure offers from Coyle and stuff, then it's going to be very hard to turn turn it down. But if people aren't getting anywhere near that, then I don't think there's any reason why we, we have to sell. Yeah, look, obviously I agree. I think, but the way I view it, especially with down two players, is the club know, like, you, we all would understand if, if the right offer comes in the club, I'm going to refuse it. Don't get me wrong. But at this moment in time, we'll have to say that we are reluctant to sell both. I feel like with Maka, there's less risk for him. I, I, I believe that because I don't see what world another season it not does him any harm. I still think even if he stays one more season, he can get that move to to League One. But then again, I think Jody out of the two probably has the better potential, if you like, to play as a championship footballer. So I'd understand that move if it happened. But with Maka, again, I, I think he's more than good enough to play in League One. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, you, you just don't know what this season is going to hold for us. I, I guess the the, op, the, the optimism and the, the the goal ultimately is to obviously aim for promotion again. You get promoted with Notch, you're in League One anyway. Probably at one, like I say, one of the biggest in League One. But in terms of size of club and, you know, home attendances, you're going to be up there again in terms of that, in terms of biggest club that way. So maybe that's what he's looking at. But I'm not sure, obviously. Again, I, I do agree with you. I don't think it's too long until the first rumour comes. I think there's a lot of fans out there. I see a lot of posts about you know people wanting Langstaff to lead their line in, in League One, and they don't surprise me. You know, it obviously comes with reason. You don't you don't just finish as League Two goal score, top goal scorer for no reason. So obviously, I'll see what happens there. But obviously, moving on into the uh, into the next vote, if you like, and that was for the most improved player of the season, and the three nominees were Alessandro Jatta. And before I go on to the other ones, I just want to say Jatta is involved in that because I feel like off the back of his first few cameos for Knots, it weren't obviously the greatest. He was settling in. Obviously, then he came with all the goals for us as well. So I feel like that improvement so quick, so soon was why he was added into this vote. Again, we had Lewis Macari, which became the reason. Obviously, I don't think it's any secret. Our defence was a massive problem last season. And if there was one spark in that, Obviously, minus, you know, I'm not talking the wing-backs, wing-backs speak for themselves, but in terms of the heart of the back five, you know, Lewis McCarry is probably one of the brightest spots of that. And Aaron Amane as well. You know, I feel like, obviously, his contribution to the team probably went a little bit under the radar, but obviously, courtesy of the man on the other side. Um, but again, someone who, when you actually strip it back and look at his stats from the season, is someone who, again, contributed massively to the, to the season. And he was the winner with 49% of the votes, but McCarry just missing out with 45% and Tom question is for you do you think that's a fair fair result yeah again yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's who it. I voted for I voted for, for Aaron um, I, I think on the um, you know we could have had Jody Jones in there really I think he, otherwise he would have won every award um, you know he, he technically he was improved because he, in the National League he had a good uh, end to the season don't get it wrong obviously scored that goal in, in the, the semis and, and obviously scored a penalty at, at Wembley but I don't think anyone would have seen him uh, breaking the assist record, or, or at least breaking it to the extent that he did. Um, but to talk about Aaron on the other side, the other wing back, I think he had a, an improvement in the second half of the season. I think he wasn't one that, yeah. I think we we spoke about on the pod. We were kind of um, questioning is probably the wrong word, but his contribution was perhaps was lacking behind the other players in the in the attacking uh, numbers, and then all of a sudden he started to really improve his output. Um, I think he's one of the one of the reasons, one of the, like, out of Stuart Maynard's sort of reign so far, one of the, the positives you could take is Aaron is Aaron's performances. I think his, his level has really has gone up. And whilst a lot of things, other things haven't gone well, that is one thing that, that has gone well. And I think it's a deserved award. Um, he is a player that, as we say, often gets overlooked, but he works really hard. Um, 
And when he's got the confidence, he is one of the the players that you would hate to defend against. And if he can add that little bit of consistency to his game, which he seemed to be adding towards the back end of the season, then we've got uh, definitely one of the best pairs of wing backs uh, in League Two. Look, I definitely can't disagree. That's for sure. But I think for me, it's like now, obviously, with Toby's departure, you know, Aaron technically is the only recognised right wing back at the club. And I don't think come the start of the season, he will be the only, which obviously, may, obviously, in, you know, don't read between the lines. I do think someone will be recruited in that position. And I think that's not even a bad thing for Aaron. I think that's more of a good thing. You should see it as a positive because it's definitely not someone being brought in to rival him for his position. But although that is probably how it will seem, and I can only see that being a good thing, because you speak there about, obviously, he's very much a confidence player, and I feel like he is someone who needs someone challenging, because Toby obviously was there, but I don't think anyone really expected Toby to get too many minutes, especially towards the end of the season, when he really featured on the Stuart main. I actually can't remember too many times he did. So, I think Aaron... I think competition for places is always healthy, um, depending on how you use it. Again, obviously, like we can use them in a bad way, and like we did last season for plenty of times. You know, with the goalkeeper situation, you know, we have three options that we kept chopping and changing. But I do feel like you do need that sort of competition. And I don't just think that's on the right. I think that's on the left as well. You know, you can't just you can't just have Jody as your left wing back because for whatever reason Jody gets suspended or picks up an injury, and then who, who else are you going to play there? So. Obviously, again, it obviously all just ties down into the fact that I think it's a big summer. And I, I obviously, I, I firmly believe that this club is, is going to sign quite a lot of footballers. So let's hope that is the case. Uh, and moving into the third vote, which was for the, uh, the best January signing, which is quite interesting, funnily enough, because Lewis McCoy was also included in this, yet only finished with 5% of the votes which is quite, quite surprising, really, because when you contrast it into the most improved player, McCoy almost won that. Um, but included in this for the first time is Scott Robertson as well, uh, who was the eventual winner with 63% of the votes, which is obviously no surprise. And Alessandro Jatta finished with 32. So, again, so I want to just get your thoughts on that. A fair result, not only, but also how exciting is it knowing that Scott Robertson has that partnership with Matty Palmer to look forward to in the 2024-25 season? Oh, it's so exciting. I, I really think it's the right result. Again, um, not to say it again, but it was who I who I voted for. And uh, I, I really think that Scott Robertson, I can't quite put into words how much I think that we've got an absolute steal with him. I think that, you know, the, the recruitment team took a lot of criticism last season, but I think they, they got Scott Robertson spot on. Um, you know, they found a player who just, he just, he's everything you want in a midfielder. Um He's like a, a left-footed Matty Palmer to an extent. He can do a lot of the same things. Um, he, he gets it. He works hard. He's got that passion. He's got that bit of bite in midfield that we need. Quality on the ball. He really has got like everything that you would want in that midfield for, for Notts County. So I, I'm really, 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 really happy with that signing. Like, I, I think that, again, I think the amount of votes he got is is right. I think that it's part, perhaps harsh on Jatta and Macari, especially Jatta, who, I'll be honest, when you think of next season, I think sometimes I'm guilty of it. I forget that we've got Jatta because going into next season, he, I mean, wow, he's going to have a full pre-season and a full season. He's going to be one hell of a player. But Scott Robertson, for me, is so exciting. And like you say, Matty Palmer to come back. I think what's brilliant about having Scott Robertson is that we haven't got to rush Matty Palmer back. I Don't get it wrong, I would love it if that was our partnership on the open day of the season. But if, if Matty's not had the minutes to... To get up to speed yet, I'm not upset if it takes another two or three games for him to be starting because we've got Scott Robertson who is who has been so good. Um and he's gonna come up against his former side, Fleetwood this season, who who kind of wrote him off a little bit and let's hope he gets the chance to prove them wrong because I think so far he's he's proven a lot of us wrong when he signed, there probably wasn't that much optimism about him. Um and he's ended the season as our January signing of the of the season because I mean what an impact he had. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, look, I agree with a lot of it. Again, like, I do think we have a massive steal on our hands. I do genuinely believe that he is a very, very top-class footballer for this division. And again, I, I think I can't remember whose tweet it was um, that I replied it under, but I can see him being named if he carries on, you know, in, in the way that we've seen him play. I can see him being part of, as an early pre-season prediction, as part of the League 2 team this season. It definitely wouldn't surprise me. 
but you touched on it there that it might take Matty a few a few match days to you know get back into the first team squad. Hopefully, it doesn't. Uh, but you know, with them sort of injuries, you know, the more time you take, the more you you know, the more safety around it, I suppose. But obviously, like we're going to obviously do an episode on a recruitment and what we think should be brought in. But for a little question to you now, I mean, as it stands, technically, the only two real recognised centre midfielders that we have contracted to the football club is obviously Robertson and Palmer. That being because obviously Jim O'Brien and uh, John Bostock have left now, and obviously Charlie Colkett were back back to uh, but well back to crew, and then they've let him go as well. So I just want to know, like. And I will ask you for names as well, because I feel like it would be very important to, to add this context, especially for, for the sort of content uh, that you produce online, which is very good. Don't get me wrong, it is very, very good. But um, yeah, I just want to know, like, where do we go in terms of that? Because for me, there is a certain free transfer who still is yet to find a club who has just left Stockport County. Uh, I think everyone knows who I'm referring to there, and I feel that for me, that's a perfect fit for Knotts. And I hope, I pray that I don't see him anywhere else other than Madeleine. But if that isn't to be, you know, you've got to look elsewhere. And I just want to know, is there any names that tickle your fancy, my friend? Yeah, yeah obviously, um, I'll let you talk about him in a minute. But but I, I really like, um, I think it's Tyler Lakin, who's been at, been on loan at Sutton. I, th- I think he was at Burton Albion. Um, he's, he's, you know, he's, a, he's a Midlands lad anyway. And um, he, he was excellent for Sutton. Uh, their fans seem to think that if he came in, um, two or three games earlier than than he he would have kept them up. Um, just a really really good centre midfielder. Um, does a bit of everything. Got goals in his game as well. Uh, McCann as well from Forest Green, another team that got relegated. But I really like him. Um, classy midfielder. Um, obviously got that goal against us, and he's got a lot of pedigree, which I think is a, is a is a feature of a lot of our signings or players that perhaps aren't signing from clubs that um, you know are. Uh, that you would think are oh, recognised as ball playing sides, but they've they've come through an academy that that play that way, or they come through an academy that's got a, a track record of producing these top talents. Um, so there are two names that that spring to mind. Um, there's a couple more like Ben Fox. I think he's at Northampton. He's out of contract. Um, ben Stevenson. He's from Leicester. He he's out of contract at Portsmouth. So there's a few from the division above as well. Who, I mean, we could you never know. Might be able to entice to to drop down but I think it's important that we add at least one maybe two obviously we've got Geraldo to come back but you've got then you'd have Geraldo and Matty Palmer coming back from from serious injuries so there's a there's a whole host of of midfielders who are available I think it's important that we act um quickly but also we don't panic and and just take the first available available player but teams are starting to make moves I would like to see I think that's one of the positions I think we need to, is one of the priority positions in central midfield because, like you say, we've only got two really recognised. I'd like to see one in the door by by the end of uh, well, next two or three weeks. Really, I'd like to see one in the door, um, and hopefully we have a, a nice episode to uh, talk about a new signing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's open again. Look, seeing a lot of fans getting a bit agitated with obviously how quiet it's been around a couple of minutes. I don't think silence is necessarily a bad thing, but what I do think, you know, I was definitely definitely disappointed when Sarsovic obviously went to Bradford. I feel like that would have been a perfect fit. Obviously, again, you know, people always have said that, you know, a number 10 really isn't the priority uh, for not, obviously, with, you know, Crowley and Didzi. But again, I always say that, you know, you need this depth. If you want to be successful in this division, you need the depth. You know, you look at the teams that got promoted, obviously, you know, minus Crawley, but Crawley have their own different story for a reason. And that did they took chances on players that really didn't get a look in. Whereas you look at Mansfield, stop Paul Rex, and okay, yes, their budget might be better than ours, but the depth they had is the reason why they got promoted. You know, they had they, they could change these players, and especially last season as well, when we looked like we were burnt out in games. I definitely think depth is sort of a priority that we need to take, as well as quality of signing as well. And I feel, you know, Sarsovic probably had that line move lined up, but. You know, missed opportunity, I'd definitely say so. And again, you know, the fact that I asked you that question, you just rattled off five names off the top of your head, just shows, I mean, you, you, the knowledge you have of the leagues is brilliant. And that's why I'm excited to do the episode with you moving on. Uh, but look, yeah, the player I was referring to, I think this is how you plan to say, if it's not, I'm sorry, but I think it's Crowsdale, you know, the one who's just been released from Stockport. And for me, like, 
I'll say it all the time, this this change of room, you know, when you want to be promoted, you know, consecutively like we, we are aiming for, you know, I, you know, again, there's the, the goal of last season was promotion, whether people like to hear it or not, that was the common word in any answer that was given at the start of last, at the start of last season. Uh, it definitely has to be the same again, you know, whether you have belief in the manager or not, uh, that, that's a whole different story, but... At the end of the day, it's going to be Stu that's in the, at the helm. He's going to be the one to lead the charge. So, and I feel like Crowsdale is the is the place you have to start. He still hasn't got a club. You know, he made thirty six appearances for Stockport last season. I think it was twenty three starts. I know that because I included him in something last night that would probably drop in the next few days. Uh, but yeah, look, promoted with Stockport played a pivotal part in that to from the National League to League Two. And again, from League 2 to League 1, and obviously they let him go now. He's a free transfer. Whoever picks him up is obviously going to get a very, very good footballer. I hope it's the one that we definitely have at least asked about, inquired about. Because again, I don't think, you know, if his level's not League 1, it's certainly League 2, and he's proven that. And where else do you go in League 2? Obviously, that's bigger and better than this. There's not many places around it. MK Dons may be okay. But do they need him? Probably not as much as what we do. Bradford as well, they can just probably do without him now. They took Sarsovic and I hope that's how they see it. And I hope we just end up with him because I do think he's a very good player. And again, 23 starts at Stockport last season. Uh, you know, the champions. So, again, for me, it, 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 I mean, if I was in charge of recruitment, that transfer would have already been made. So... Who knows what's going to happen? I mean, Tom listed off a few good names and I've listed on one that I really, really want. And to be honest, that's the only one I've got my mind on. So I really do hope it happens. But again, moving on in from the voting, we moved into the, the best summer signing. And I think we understood where this one was obviously going to go to. You know, the options of David McGoldrick, Jody Jones and Dan Crowley. David McGoldrick was... Obviously, maybe a massive surprise because he only received 1% of the vote, which I thought maybe was a little bit harsh. But then when you're in a conversation with Jody and you know Dan Crowley, it's probably a little bit difficult to expect to win that. But obviously, Jody ran away with it, 78% of the votes. Dan Crowley with 21%. And Tom, I, I, I don't even need to ask you if it's a surprise because you're obviously going to say no. But let's just talk about the importance of that summer signing then. Because obviously, at the day we... We, we filmed this episode. It has been a year of having Jody on a permanent deal. He, he signed on this day in 2023. And in terms of importance to the squad, and not only in terms of assists and, and goals that he scores himself, but in terms of just the personality that he is around the change room, he clearly has something about him. And also the League Two player of the season that he eventually turned out to be. So obviously just your thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, all, all three players were good signings, you know, and but but Jody Jones stands out above the rest, and he's one that actually you always have to remind me we signed in the summer because I always um, because obviously he was on loan last season. I always think, yeah, I, I I genuinely always forget that we picked him up in in the summer, but you know that will turn out to be the one of the best signings we've we've made, and uh, and and hopefully one of the most important. You know, it, it technically probably won't be one of the most important in terms of this season because ultimately we didn't uh, whilst he broke all the individual records for the for the team it didn't end up making the difference that we would have hoped and obviously that's not Jody's fault but hopefully this season if he stays and, and gets promoted then it can be one of the most important um you know signs we made and to be fair because of his contribution in the playoffs last season it, it certainly was important then as well um what a player what a guy um obviously I know you did your your piece with him recently and and I mean fantastic work and obviously such a fantastic guy as well and um and I mentioned with the other two as well Dan Crowley and McGoldrick especially Dan Crowley who has had a very good season and probably for a lot of sides would be their sign of the season as well um very 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 good footballer and really looking forward to seeing what he can do next season um and also did see hopefully he had a bit of a stop start season obviously picked a few knocks as well along the way um and I would like to see him um, have a have a better season because I, I, we know what he's capable of. We know what level uh, Diddy can can hit, and I, I think that hopefully next season we'll, we'll see the best of him. Yeah, well, let me just ask you about that number ten role for us going forward next season because obviously in the past we've had some very successful number tens. You know, most of note one who's just been promoted to the championship. So fair play to him for that. But I just feel like in terms of our system that we like to play. The number 10 is definitely a massive, massive role in the team. And especially with 
with Matty coming back in, and you know, we're obviously partnering up with where you'd expect uh, Scott Robertson, obviously, unless there's some some different idea going forward. Obviously, again, you know, you, what you don't really have, you wouldn't expect the, the 10 to have to do too much of the tracking back when you've got them two behind you. And I've always said that Crowley's best form last season was when Matty was in the team because Matty did all the dirty work and Crowley was just the guy in front of him. He was just pinging left, right, and centre and scoring goals. So, I just want to know from for for your point of view, like how important is that ten roll going forward? And not only that, would you expect to see a, a new number ten brought in? Because again, you, we have to. I'm referring back to the the Sarsovic, if you like. Again, fans online, we don't really need that position, and maybe we don't. But again, as I just touched on there, you know, you always need depth in order to be successful in any division. And maybe that will be something we look at going forward. But again, I just want to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, maybe, maybe yeah, this maybe. is a good time to bring in Joe Sabara. I don't know. But obviously, we were heavily sort of rumoured with him as well online. And, um, you know, I can't comment on, on ins and outs because don't know. But obviously, it looked like we were, uh, from what the talk on online, that we were close. And then obviously, all of a sudden, he, he popped up in a Doncaster shirt. So I, I think that kind of, if if there was any sort of concrete interest, um, it kind of send sends a message that we will bring in a, num- a number number ten. I think it's a position we need depth in. Um, even Crawley, who we mentioned before, had depth in that position. You know, Liam Kelly had that wonderful, wonderful playoff campaign, but he wasn't in the team for about a month before that. Um, Ronan Darcy was in the team for them, and he was on the bench at Wembley. Came off off the bench onto the pitch, and that's the kind of depth they had. They had players in that position to bring on, change games. It's the most important position to have to de- the depth in because they can change the game. Um, we've got Dan Crowley, who obviously nailed on to start there. Then you've got Didzi. You've got a choice if you play Jatta and, and Langstaff up top. You, you might only play one ten. You've obviously got Austin. You've got Scott as well to come back. You can play there. Um, but obviously, I do think that we may look at another one because you know your players like Sam Austin can play slightly deeper in midfield, um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think we will probably look to bring one in. Uh, whether it's a high priority position, I don't know. I think that there's other positions I would rather see us look at first because, like we said, it is for depth. But I think if we want to get promoted from this division, you've hit the nail on the head already in this episode. The teams, the, the three that went up, and I think even Crawley, they all had players and options. Like you mentioned Crowsdale there, he played 23 games for them, but he was still an important player. But he didn't play every every game. A lot of their players played 20 to started 20 to 30 games because they were able to rotate they're able to rest. If they got an injury, they didn't have to worry. You know, we lost Matty Palmer, of course, um, like the most important player in our team, but we, our season sort of fell apart from there. Uh, we want to be in a position next season where if, you know, one of those um, injuries does happen, which obviously we do not want, but if it does, we want to be in a position where it doesn't completely derail our season because that, that's what happened. Just the season just gone. Yeah, Absolutely. And obviously, you mentioned there, Sam Austin. I didn't mention him in the in in the category of tens because I don't even know if he knows where he plays anymore. That man is so versatile. You know, he could play eight, ten, wing back. So, look again. I, I definitely agree. Like, you know, we, we we'll we we'll obviously move on after this to speak about you know Joe Sabaru or speculation and that. But I I just hope that you know I hope we don't get to a point in 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 the summer where you know. You make these panic loan signings, which is obviously clearly something we have done in the past. You know, Tipton for it in, in in the summer was pop- that screen to me as you know missed target because we had him on trial. He went back, and then three weeks later we, we signed him on loan. You know, we I don't think he was someone that the club intended on having. And again, with Charlie Colkett as well, that screen to me missed signing, missed 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 target as well. And I hope we don't get to that point. Um, so yeah, we'll just see what happens there, but. Look, I, as I, as much as again you mentioned it, you know the, the recruiting team took a lot of flack, and when that was rightly so, you know the, the recruitment wasn't the greatest. Obviously, we had some hits, but we had a lot of you know not so not so good uh, moments in terms of that recruitment as well. And I, I think that's reflected on the fact that you know two of the three transfer listed players are uh, two summer signings from last year. So we definitely need to make sure this summer has been aced. Uh, but moving on to the final vote which was the goal of the season. And for me, this is one that I would disagree with, funnily enough, because Aaron Amane won it uh, with his goal against Walsall. 
uh, away, which is obviously a very good goal. Do not get me wrong, but that that won with forty one percent of the votes. Uh, one that was added in there was the Joey Jones free kick against Harrogate, and I was surprised that that only finished on twenty four percent of the votes. To be fair, but my winner would have been the Lewis Macari goal against Gillingham because, well, a Lewis Macari scoring a goal is very rare. To the way he scored it, I mean, Jesus, like that top corner is probably still shaking. And um, three, the celebration after it was absolutely amazing. But Tom, the question is obviously, do you agree with Namale being the winner? And do you think there was any goals that could have been added into that vote? You know what I love? You know what? The fact that we all have different winners because my winner was Jody Jones free kick. Uh, I just love I love free kick goals and that for me was just unreal um, and I, yeah I just I, I just love a free kick I love a set piece goal so yeah that got my got my vote so I love the fact that obviously uh, us two have got different ones and the and the viewers and listeners have got um, a different goal as well uh, off the top of my head I, I'm struggling to think of any yeah, one I did really enjoy actually was against Forest Green a game I've talked about a lot uh, on the pod but that breakaway goal I think it's the Didzy one where he gives it a little. Uh, People said he winked at the crowd or or whatever. Um, love that goal, breakaway, great goal, great goal. Um, so yeah, that that would probably be kind of in contention for me as well. But yeah, I like the fact that all all three um goals got a lot of votes and um yeah, not a bad not a bad selection of goals have we? We had a lot to choose from. To be fair, we scored scored a fair few. I'm glad we didn't do a goal conceded of the year award because uh, we had a few of those to choose from as well. Yeah, we absolutely did. You're yeah, not wrong there. I thought, again, look, Jody Jones' free kick was absolutely a quality. You know, to bend it with his left foot into the far top corner. It's obviously why it was included. But for me, the Macari goal against Gillingham, I mean, just at the point of which, you know, sometimes he's in, in games like that, you know, when Gillingham equalised and the crowd's up for it, you know, you see knots crumble. But the way that goal just flew in, like, just something I probably will never forget. And I feel like if he don't score another goal for this football club, he will not leave disappointed because that goal was enough to to keep you satisfied for sure. But, you know, a bit of a uh, one to make you think now, I guess. You know, I like to ask a question after every vote. And obviously this one's a little bit different. So I'll give you a, a, a little, uh, you know, a different one if you like. And that is a rogue shout, if you like, for someone who could score the goal of the season next season. And obviously, I say rogue, you can obviously go for your Jody if you really wanted to. But someone who, you know, let's just, in, in, in a world in which you could see, who who do you reckon could pull off something that could be up for goal of the season next season? That is a great question. That is a great question. Someone I've got in my mind is Adam Chickson because of that goal he scored at Wheelstone against uh, Stuart Maynard. He absolutely, a little bit like Macquarie, uh, took the roof of the net off that that day. Uh, obviously, that's a bit different now because um, he's obviously not in the in the side as much. And obviously, I think he got 10 goals that, that, that season, so he's a bit more uh, in the team. Um, so, I think someone that could is uh, is the skipper, Carl Cameron. Obviously, scored a great goal at MK Dons as well. He's got that in his locker, I think. Gets if he gets in those positions again, which I think he can and he will. Um, he's got he's got a great left foot on him, so I'm going to go for Carl Cameron as my choice. I'd love to ask you the same question: Have you got anyone that you yeah, would you would pick you, for a road shout? You would you would pick for? Yeah, look, obviously I don't ask this question without obviously thinking about it myself. So I've came prepared. One that I can see, obviously depending on if he he signs a new deal, is Geraldo Badrami. And the reason I say that is, uh, for me, like, I feel like, if, well, let me just explain. Like, obviously, I'm really happy the club offered him a new deal, do, do not get me wrong, because I feel like the most recent memory we have of him was obviously the game at the race course, and it obviously wasn't his best display, but that don't take away the fact that he is a good footballer. Like, there's no two ways about that. And I was worried that the club were going to let him go, because there was one destination that I could obviously see him in and that was I thought he would he had Walsall written all over him if, if he did leave obviously being, you know, Birmingham based side, you know, back home and you know, Walsall he would he would have really suited that sort of setup as well. And I was worried that because he is definitely that sort of player that we would let go and then he would go somewhere like Walsall and by December everyone's talking about how he's like the best player in the league in his position and this, that and whatnot. But I can. So I, I, the thing is, when I think of these things, I start believing it as well, and I can definitely see, like, 
a corner. I don't know why he, this is his thing. I don't know. He would obviously be in the box trying to attack it. But if it was just a world where he was like just lurking on the halfway line and the ball just rolled right to him, I could just see him absolutely put his foot into it and somehow flying into the top corner in front of the cop. And then if that does happen, you best believe I will be finding this episode. I'll be clipping this and putting it all over social media. But no, honestly, I generally do think he has got that, you know, that worldly wonder strike in him. I mean, who thought it about Lewis McCarry? And then if I say that, you know, you could say that about everyone. Everyone may have that will be striking him, so you just don't know. But I definitely thought it was a question worth asking. And who knows, mate, we might be right. Uh, but that it concludes, you know, the award section. And obviously a quick thank you for everyone who did vote. We received, I think it was like 500 votes in terms of the whole voting. So that was very, very nice to see. Obviously 500 votes on all of them, not on one. Um but yeah, obviously, I just there's a few topics we'd like to top, uh, touch on now, and the first one was you know Joe Sabara, and we obviously spoke about this prior to hit and record this uh, this afternoon. And look, yeah, I feel like it, it'd be very strange for Knox to just not have been interested. You know, every time he was in the National League, there was always that sort of you know he was always sort of the name linked with Knox, if you like, and obviously now he's a Doncaster player. Uh, disappointing. It can only be disappointing, but you can't really judge that on based on who we bring and we haven't brought anyone in yet. So it'd be unfair to say if it was disappointing or not. But one thing is to say that it's very strange that Knots were always sort of a fan of him, and when he became a free transfer, he he hasn't uh, you know found his way to the football club, and it's quite surprising. I just want to get your thoughts. Yeah, it is an odd one. It's been an odd one, especially because there was a lot of chat online that he may may be finally making his way in but ultimately didn't materialise and I, I'm di- I, you know you're right you can't be disappointed until, until we see who, who, who we get in uh, or we don't get in um, I would have liked to have signed him I'll be honest like on a free I think it was a low risk um, move and he's obviously gone to Doncaster who ended the season really strongly he's not like, like we've touched on it's not a position we necessarily need a starter in but it's, you know we need those players for for the depth to I think to go up but it's not the ideal start. I'm not going to panic and say, oh, that's it. We haven't signed a target. Then, you know, that must be over. There'll be plenty of times in the past that we've missed out on targets and signed good players, etc. There's plenty of times, like we've said already, that we, we've missed targets and didn't sign players. But it's still very early. He's obviously made his move very early himself. Um, and he's made his decision, yeah, very early on. And if we were interested, obviously, clearly Doncaster have offered more, be- uh, better, but there's no proof or concrete evidence that we were interested and um yeah we'll have to just have to see who we bring in because hopefully we um we forget about Joe Sabara uh, by the end of the by the end of the transfer window. Yeah, hopefully hopefully so. But again look like we we've said it there, you know, you can only be disappointed when you see what we bring in instead. And one thing I would like to say is, you know, don't be too disappointed if we are shopping again in Leeds beneath us because if there's anyone who can give you that sort of you know you know emphasis on you know the quality of the lower leagues you only have to look again at what Crawley have achieved this season you know Liam Kelly you know relegated with Rochdale found his way back into Crawley you know and someone I'm a very big fan of by the way that uh, Lolos as well I believe his name is again you know came from a, a step in 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 National League which is which was well beneath League Two, and now look at him going into League One. So I feel like, you know, yes, Sabara, you know, a National League player last season, but again, now he's in the Football League. So now he is a Football League player. You know, he's no longer a National League player, and he is someone who was capable of doing that, you know, long before his move anyway. But I, I do think, genuinely do believe that we will shop in the National League again, at least once or twice in the summer. And that's not a bad thing. There's a lot of quality down there. And, you know, it, there's more than one position we need, obviously. And we talk about centre-attacking midfielders. You know, you've got Con Clark, who, again, is it going to be realistic for us to sign that sort of player? Probably not, because I do think League One is in his sights. But there's, there's, look, there's so many good quality players down there. And I, this is why I want to ask you, because obviously you... And that mind of yours, I mean, you probably got about 300 players in your mind right now because that's the sort of content you produce and it's absolutely incredible and you deserve a lot of praise for it. But I just want to know, like, give me, 
you see, look, this is this is bad to ask because we have an episode coming out about recruitment, but I want to do it now. We're going to do it now. Sorry, producer Char, we're going to do it now. I just want to know, like, what sort of if there's any names in the National League that you would love to see in a Notts County shirt? Just give me three. Three names. It's a good, it's a good question. I'll, I'll try and vary it up, um, the position wise. So, old shot had a lad on loan from uh, from Portsmouth. Um, uh, I'm going to say his name wrong, but M M Noga, he M M N O G A, um, really good centre back, really really good, uh, athletic. He's on a free now, let, let go by Portsmouth. Um, but obviously he was on loan at Old Shot a few seasons in a row. Really really good, really athletic, um, quick. Exactly what we need on that, on that right hand side. Can play right back, can play right wing back, but mainly right centre back. And um, yeah, was part of their FA Cup run. So. Um, really, really good player. Really like him. Obviously, you mentioned Con Clark. Probably a little bit, like you say, out of our sights. We obviously, would would love to to have him in. Um, but obviously, like you say, probably a little bit out of our sights. There's not necessarily any goalkeepers that I would um that would jump to mind straight away because I think that we we probably need to be looking at um well, obviously we were linked with the um the lad from from Sunderland. Another one actually who. Is on loan at Darlington, and from what I've seen of him, uh, he looked very, very good, um, and he is probably one of the best prospects in the country. So, look, we've done well with with keepers on loan from Sunderland before, so I wouldn't mind him in, um, Matty Young. And then finally, um, oh, good question. Uh, I'll give you a right wing back, Connor Barrett from Fylde. I think that he deserves an EFL move. Um, but like we've mentioned earlier in the show, we probably want someone in to, to push Aaron uh, in the main, but not not like take his place. And I think um, Barrett's 21 or 20, he might have just turn 22. But he's the kind of player that uh, would probably be willing to come in and, and push for that position. But really, really, really good player. I really like him as well. Yeah, look, it's funny you say, actually, because again, I produced something last night which should be out in the next few days. But I actually mentioned James Clark in that. And obviously, Solly or Moore's player, you know, a, a, a position, you know, that he, he takes up is commonly, you know, right back. Obviously, I don't know what his capabilities are as right wing back. But I definitely think something that we should look at for whoever we bring in as a right wing back is, you know, a more defensive minded one. And I feel like, you know, James Clark, you know, they call him the Rural the Kafu. That's what they refer to him at Solly. And he was a part of the, uh, the National League team of season. You know, you don't get that for no reason. And I definitely feel like that's someone. Who I wouldn't mind, you know, seeing at, at, at Notts County. That's for that is for sure. I, I remember, you know, we played Solio in our promotion season. And he made that ridiculous off the line clearance as well. So, you know, as someone who I would be massively, massively surprised if he's still in the National League next season. Um, therefore, I see his level as League Two, and I hope, you know, again, is is it a hope? Yeah, it absolutely, is a hope. I hope that we, we you know, we can be the club that he comes to because he's a very good player. And you mentioned there, uh, you know, goalkeepers, not necessarily too many goalkeepers you'd say. But I did mention one last night and that was uh, Ethan Ross at Altrincham. Again, look, I mean, he has not asked me to say this, don't get me wrong. He is obviously someone I do class as a friend. But also, he's a very good goalkeeper and that's something you can't take away from him. Obviously, Altrincham just, you know, recorded their highest finish in the National League fourth, and when he came, he missed uh, from late January to early March, and they didn't have the greatest of form. You know, he kept 10 clean sheets in that season as well. Uh, when he came back, I think he kept four uh, in 10, so it just says everything about him. You know, has obviously, again, you know, that promotion mentality, he was promoted with Stockport from the National League to League Two. Um, and yeah, just someone who I think that deserves, you know, that sort of opportunity to be a first choice goalkeeper in League Two. But can you take that risk, especially with the season we just have with goalkeepers? I don't know. Uh, but if if the club are willing to do it, it definitely won't be something I'd be disappointed by. And also, someone again that I would be massively surprised. Although I know that he's loving it at Altrincham, someone I would be surprised if he didn't have a lot of League Two interest. So you just obviously never know. Uh, but yeah, you know what? I'm going to ask you another question now, quickly before we wrap this up. And it is about goalkeepers, about the goalkeeping situation. I feel like for me, it is massively important this summer for us to sign somebody that we see as the goalkeeper 
for 46 league games in the season. And, you know, there's that certain man from uh, Millwall who's been released, you know, as someone who has been at Notts County before. I don't really feel like I need to say his name. I think everybody understands who I'm referring to. And that is someone, again, who I mentioned yesterday because, you know, he, he's coming to the he's 36 year old coming to the end of his career, you know, you can get away with having an old goalkeeper, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. And again, someone who's obviously very much, uh, you know, top quality, plays a lot of championship football and someone, who, again, who I would, who I would imagine would quite like to end his career at, at Mellon Lane. But again, just want to ask you, if is there any, God, I mean, you know, you don't have to obviously give me National League names, any sort of goalkeeper that you would you would like to see a club bring in. Again, just don't worry about transfer fees because this is somewhere, again, that I think we should be spending money on to make sure we get the right man in. I 100% agree we should be we should be trying to get the right man in uh, and spending on a goalkeeper because I, I feel that's what we haven't really done and that's no disrespect to the goalkeeper we've had. We haven't really pushed the boat out and, and, and gone, gone heavy on it. I, I, the name I would have wanted was Luke Southwood. He was at Cheltenham, played. 46 games for them this se- uh, this season. Played 46 games for them last season. Out of contract. Unfortunately, he broke he broke his leg on the last game of the season. So, um, yeah, like, just uh, sums up our look, really. I think he's someone that we would have been interested in. Um, excellent, excellent goalkeeper. And uh, that's League One. Obviously, you probably have League One interest and stuff. But um, if you're looking for a keeper to play 46 games, that's what he's done last two seasons. And unfortunately, obviously, breaks his leg. I've been, I've seen online that apparently that's not the worst injury to get, um, and the, you, you, he could in theory be back very early on in the season because of the time off. But I think that that's a, a risk to take with you know going to a season with a goalkeeper that's had months and months off recovering. You don't know how he's going to recover. Um, he would have been one I absolutely would have loved. Um, so yeah, it's difficult now to to, to throw other names in there because he was one I had my, my eyes set on. Uh, Toby Savin is out of contract. To Accrington. Again, though, he feels a little bit like a bit of a risky one because about two seasons ago, he was like tipped to get a move to the championship, but then didn't materialise, got relegated with Ackerton, and then it's kind of he's no longer their first choice. They signed a new goalkeeper today, um, the MK Dons keeper. So he'd be one that I think would be a little bit of a risk. I, th- I think with the goalkeeper, the most important thing, and this sounds really ridiculous to say, is that we get the, fa- the fans are on side and on board with him because I do think that. Whoever we sign, if the fans aren't 100 behind them, Meadow Lane is a brilliant place to play at. But when you are a keeper that isn't particularly well loved by the by the Meadow Lane fans, you I, I guarantee they can hear it. You know, because when we've had keepers in, um, and there's a mistake made, you hear the groan from 10,000, 11,000 fans. I'm sure that knocks your confidence. So I think whoever it is that comes in needs to be someone that we we get behind. And I'm not saying that we have to get. What I mean by that is the name needs to be big enough or from a level that the fans go, yeah, this is the guy. Um, and I don't normally think that fans should determine that, but I think with the goalkeeper situation, it, it really does play a big part with, with confidence. I thought that would be the final question, but until you said what you just said there, I have to ask you uh, about one name then, Archie Mayer. Yeah, I would, uh, I'd love him back. And I'm glad you mentioned him actually, because... One man that brought him to the club, I think we need to mention him before we wrap up, is obviously Tom Wheel. Um, obviously, the club haven't made an official announcement, but he's announced on his social media that he's gone. Um, but to answer your question about Archie Mayer, I'd absolutely love to have him back because he's had that experience in the EFL as well now. He's been at Morecambe, he's had the experience. So I'd, I'd 100% have him back. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to mention Tom Wheel. Right, you mentioned it because we're talking about goalkeepers and there hasn't been any official announcement, but it, it, he obviously has left the club and... Um, yeah, just a mention for him because he he's had a massive impact on this football club. And and let's be honest, without him, we wouldn't be sitting sat here talking about. A, well, we might be talking about League Two next season. We might have won the National League this year. Who knows? But we wouldn't have had a season in the EFL because that playoff final he came up big. Not just in the uh, in the free kick for Bostock, but obviously the substitute with, with Mayer and then the, the the research on the penalties and all of which Tom Will had a massive part of. So. Yeah, I'd love to see Archie Mayer back and obviously just to mention for, for Tom as well. Yeah, obviously, look, obviously, again, look, I, I would take Archie back in a heartbeat and I, I've said it all the time online. You know, I've had many, plenty of conversation with Archie Mayer and he always said that he'd love to come back one day. So, who knows, man? Who knows? But, um, 
Yeah, that's for Tom Wheel. Um, I mean, very disappointed to see him leave. Um, you know, definitely, definitely a split opinion online, you know, because obviously it looks like we're going to get some new backroom stuff. Never usually uh, too much of a bad thing, but again, I can't imagine, um, you know, I can't imagine the offer wasn't there for Wheelie to move on to Swansea, you know, when Williams left. And obviously, it, I'd imagine that was something that we, he was definitely offered and he, he chose to stay here. And now, obviously, to be let go, it's probably a, a little bit more difficult to take. But obviously, we don't know that for sure if he was offered that. But one thing we do know is that we might know it soon because, again, Tom Wheel is someone that we are, you know, very much open to have on the podcast. Uh, so hopefully we, can, hopefully, we can get that episode done very soon. Uh, but yeah, massively disappointed that he's no longer going to be with the club. Definitely someone that everyone can't, uh, quickly fell in love with, you know, massively pivotal to 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 the to the you know promotion at Wembley. And you know, I don't think there's any point of us you know going through the uh, you know what he did at Wembley. I feel like it'd be better to have him you know on air and speaking about it uh, himself, which I'm sure is something that we uh, can make happen very quickly if we wanted to. And you know, I don't see a world in which it won't. So hopefully we get that done. And look, I feel like that's the perfect way to sort of wrap it up, you know. I feel like for a first episode back when you haven't done it for three weeks, if not to blow our own trumpets, well, I feel like we absolutely smashed that. Uh, we always feel like we do, though, let's not let's not lie. You know, that you lot won't see that, but me, me, Tom and Charlie always speak about how well we do. Uh, but it gives us, you know, you, you need that confident boost sometimes. It's very nice to have it. But look, obviously, you know, university obviously was a massive... Priority over the past three weeks, all three of us, and now you know that sort of you know priority has been left behind, not left behind, but in terms of you know it's completed now. We can look at um, you know doing you know, you know obviously adding guests, doing something that um, we want to do as well. And Tom has something he wants to do as well. I think um, you know I'll let him explain that. Yeah, so this is a good opportunity for you guys to to comment below or get in touch with us because we're going to possibly look at doing a. A phone an episode where we have you guys on the pod and and you can give your opinions on probably sometime before the start of the season uh, as a more, almost a season preview um we could have a range of, of of people on so you know people that listen if you've listened this far obviously you're a regular listener and um yeah so get in touch with us you've got us all over socials um or you can do the q and a on spotify comment on youtube you can message us on on twitter or comment on twitter um or x it's known and you can get in touch with us um but yeah it's something we're looking at putting together so if you're interested in that do let us know absolutely and you know look again a continued thank you really for all the support you know we weren't active for three weeks and yet our content was still being watched you know we were still getting new subscribers as well so obviously it means a lot there's no doubt about that and we're happy just to be back now and hopefully you know we can we can progress forward you know do do all sorts of different things again we are uh, it you know the producer child might not be a you know i, I doubt he would be too fussed really but obviously we are going to do a recruitment episode we talked right like there hopefully that can be a little like nice little teaser for you of what's to come because we are going to really go into the in-depths i'm very excited for that but yeah, just a massive thank you for the continued support uh, through, especially the, through the three-week period that we weren't active, you know, it, is, it means a lot. And when we tweeted out the other day, who wants a new episode, you know, to, to see so many people wanting it straight away, it was incredible. And uh, yeah, long may, long may that continue. But Tom, is there anything else you'd like to add? No, just thank you for all the support, like you said. Um, it's, it means the world to us. And, and, and yeah, really look forward to some different episodes come in over the over the summer um to keep you guys entertained throughout whilst the football's away. Yeah, absolutely. Could not put any better myself and look, you know I like to sign off doing this one thing. And this one thing, uh, a common theme. Uh it's obviously not a season anymore, but same motto. It still applies every single day. And that is come on, you twenty twenty four, twenty five, Sky Bet League two magpies. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, I don't think you all expected to see me at the end of this video, but uh, obviously massive thank you once more if you have watched this for the full duration. Again, we obviously very much appreciate that and we hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, but yeah, look, I'm just adding a little bit at the end to uh, to say that if you could, if you want to, and if you feel like we've done a good enough job, 
you know, the football content awards uh, nominations are open now. And um, we made it a goal of ours before we started to uh, attend one of them in our in our future. And hopefully we could do it this year. So, if possible, uh, the link will be in the description. Thanks to uh, producer Joe. And yeah, if you could vote for us, that would be absolutely amazing. And we'd love you forever, as well as we already do, to be fair. And yeah, in the meantime, I'm going to go play some football. Because I don't know when Notts County are going to give me the calls play up front. But they need to, really, because I am, I am the macca that they don't know they need. But until then, yeah, keep supporting us. Thanks for watching the episode. And we'll see you soon. And please vote for us. Thanks, guys.